Uh, this is a lot weirder to just start. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You think <laughs> Welcome back to the Komei Movie Review Show. I am your host, Chayton Whiskey. I've got Cody with me, and I also have Brennan with me. I don't me. have a last name. He does not have a last name. I'm glad we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be reviewing a movie, but there is a slight twist. Um, we are going to have one team who likes the movie and one team who doesn't like the movie. The movie we chose to watch this week was The Batman. Uh, we will let you know when the spoilers are happening, but first we need to figure out what our teams are. Cody, I am going to make you hate this movie. Oh, uh, Brennan, I am going to make you love this movie. <laughs> so, um, actually, let's start off with Brennan. Yep. Brennan, why? Uh, give us a brief synopsis and tell me exactly like why you kind of like this movie. It felt like an adaptation of the cartoon from the '90s growing mm. up. Like it was, it was dark. It was creepy. Batman actually did detective. He's the world's greatest detective, That's in true. case you didn't know. Um, he actually did detective work. Um, the Riddler was creepy. He wasn't kind of like goofy off the wall. They made him really unnerving. Um, it was three hours long. It didn't feel like three hours. I enjoyed every minute. It felt like four and a half. Well, wait. <laughs> you don't know what's going on, maybe. <laughs> but for those of us who can figure out, it's a dude in a bat suit solving crimes. <laughs> Yeah, that didn't need three hours to tell us that. Mm. Well, apparently, as, you needed four and a half to figure it as, out. As somebody with several furry friends, sometimes you need a long time to figure that out. Uh, all right, Cody, let's go. Wait a minute. I'm really into bats. <laughs> oh, uh, they are mammals. They've got some hair, so technically a bat could be a furry. And put in the comments, are bats furries? Is Batman a furry? I don't know. I'm already off the rails. We kept our suits on during it. Okay. <laughs> That's the worst Batman voice ever. Cody, oh God, why no. did you hate this movie? You've got a I lot wanted, of I want to start with, like, I gave it a chance. I went in looking forward to this movie. I love the casting of Robert Pattinson. I love Robert Pattinson as an actor. I think he's a solid actor. I thought it was like, I, I went in with, like, high hopes. And it was very early on in the movie that I went, oh, this is going to suck. <laughs> like, the opening scene, they're doing this really cool sequence where Batman is like, he, basically they've done the branding of Batman where like people are just scared of shadows because they never know he's in the shadows. And they show all these sequences of criminals and they see the bat signal and they look in the shadow and they tremble and they run away and you're like, okay, cool. He's like instilling fear in this whole city to like fight crime preemptively. And then we jump to these people on a bus who are about to beat up an old guy for no reason and then Batman shows up finally. And the first line is, who are you? It's like, the, it's like the guy who everyone's terrified of, and they just attack him. And you're like, okay, so all these people who are nobodies are all terrified of Batman, but the first time he shows up, they don't even know who he is. They don't care. They attack him. He beats him up. Also, he's standing in the shadows of an abandoned subway station just hoping crime happens there, not in the city where stuff is happening. Incorrect. It was the most circumstantial, like, lucky thing ever. Incorrect. That is it where most crime happens. It was so absurd. And then they also, they set up this entire, like, character arc with this random um, criminal guy. Let's try not to get into the spoilers. No, we're not. This, no, I was going to say, this is, this is the opening sequence. So, okay. No, this is, this, they set up this, like, could-be character arc with this um, random guy who's like, they're like, we're going to have you initiate the gang by beating up this old guy, and he's, like, hesitant to do it, and then Batman shows up, and then we never see that guy again. It was a lot of effort to show multiple facial expressions of this one guy. Mind you, in his 30 seconds of screen time, he had more facial expressions than, than Robert Pattinson did the entire movie, just to set up this, like, could-be, would-be, like, character arc of a guy that we might see later in the movie, never shows up again, completely irrelevant. It's like, you made a movie three hours long, but you had to search for those extra two minutes to give a character arc to a character who did didn't exist after that scene. It was just pointless. And it was like such poor writing. It was like, okay, this movie's going to get bad. And it just got worse from there. If I may correct you, mm -hmm. he did not circumstantially just end up at the right place at the right time. During the opening monologue, he was following criminals. That was the whole point of that opening monologue was he's only one man and he can't be everywhere. So he has to pick who he follows. He followed them there, switched into his bat suit, and then confronted them. That was not shown in the movie. They just it showed was. a lot of weird camera angles to show people like could be following them. Sure, I can totally it see how that could him, be from it different angles. Stalking but then the night also, at the start of the movie, sure. and, and then he said, "You have to pick who you go after." And I mean, if you have more than half a brain cell, you could put two and two together and be like, "Oh, he went after them." 
Sure. Right but it also from the he same did. angles you're saying that he followed yeah. them, it also showed other criminals do other things and he did nothing to intervene with, like the guy robbing the convenience store. Like it was so literally in the monologue, I can't be everywhere at once. I have to pick who I go with. That was not that, that's not my my issue was like it was the whole thing was he instilled fear in the city and the first people showed up to her like, Who's oh, this guy? And it's like that the whole point of the opening is like if they just like were like, Oh no, Batman's here and then they beat him up as they're trying to escape, I would have been like on board, like, yeah, that's what makes more sense. But they like attacked him and he just punched him in the face and he's like, Okay, criminals, you've learned your lesson, there's your slap on the wrist, back to doing crime. It's like, bro, like if you're a detective, you're supposed to be collecting evidence, and I don't know, getting people arrested, none of that happened in the movie. No one was ever arrested. He's the worst detective in the world. He collects no evidence and never prosecutes anybody. Like it was so dumb. Here's the thing. It is two years into his job as Batman. He is a mythical figure right now. Like, people see the bat signal. Not everyone has seen the Batman. Some people probably think it's like a hoax or like just an urban legend. So to like actually see a guy show up in a suit and you've never seen him, maybe like a blurry picture or something, you're going to be like, who the hell is this guy? And then it's not his job to make arrests. The cops hate him in the movie. He's a vigilante. His, his one job is to literally just beat the crap out of robbers and be like, you see that? That light in the sky, don't do it again, and then run away. <laughs> Which might sound silly, but I mean... <laughs> it was <just laughs> very silly. That gave it more credit than the movie itself. It granted itself. It was bad. Sure. Well, I think at this point, we should probably get into the... Spoiler Zone! Let's try that again. <laughs> we should probably get into the... Spoiler Zone! I hope that we get, like, the cool Batman, like, Adam West thing for Oh, it. we will not. Dang it, I just want Let it! Just call I'm gonna restart that, or can you just edit that out? Alright, so, uh, Cody, this time I'll have you start. Uh, going into <laughs> the, uh, uh, spoilers of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, why did you just really, really hate it? Oh I can gosh. tell that you're very passionate about this. I'm going to be real with you. I can't break Thank down... Thank you for the, not being no, fake. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I can't break down like enough plot holes in the time we have. My brother, who's a big Batman fan, his first response was like, well, maybe you should read the source material. If the source material reading is required to appreciate the movie, then the movie is done poorly. Because A, either the movie doesn't represent the source material well, or B, the source material also sucks. Like, there's no alternative. If the movie doesn't encapsulate the entire, like, source material well enough, then you can't say it's a great movie, but it was missing all these holes that are totally explained in the source material. So, again, I don't read Batman comics. I was looking forward to this movie. I've enjoyed other Batman movies. But really quite quickly realized, like, this movie was just, like, it was just written poorly. There's so many things. It didn't, it had no reason to be three hours long. They do this entire, like, sequence where they're, like, trying to catch the penguin or convict the penguin, and, like, collect all this evidence, never arrest him, nothing happens to the Penguin, he's going to be the villain in the next movie, what was the point of all that? They go to, like, they follow him down, they get in a car chase, where they literally blow up multiple <laughs> tankers on the interstate, killing hundreds of people, and then they punch the Joker in the face, and they go, what do you know about whatever, and Joker's like, I don't know anything about it, okay, penguin. go, penguin. Penguin, penguin, my penguin. bad. Don't do it again. And they just leave him. And it's like, you just caught him in a massive drug deal, whatever. You just caused all this mayhem. Like, of course the cops hate him. He's a massive liability. Literally murdered people in the interstate. Batman calls that chase of the penguin, doesn't arrest the penguin, and then later goes, don't kill Falcone. Because if you kill him, you're as bad as he is. Like, Batman, you idiot, you just murdered a hundred civilians chasing a villain who you didn't even arrest because you had no reason to. On top of that, like, you collected the evidence, you know where he's going. He's going back to the club you were just at. Why did you ensue a car chase? It was nonsensical. On top of that, that scene was the most action we got in the whole movie. And he like would fight people, but he wouldn't kill anybody because his whole thing was like, if we kill him, we're as bad as them. Except for he's like fighting people who are like mass murderers. And he's like collecting evidence, but not actually giving anything. He's prosecuting nobody. On top, the entire movie is the premise of him like pursuing the Riddler. The entire movie is about Batman failing. He never catches the Riddler. He never stops anything from happening. And even at the end where he's talking to the Riddler in the jail cell, Riddler's like, we did it together because the Riddler was setting Batman up. The entire movie, the superhero does nothing except for help the Riddler to kill people on the interstate, convict no criminals. The Riddler is the superhero of the Batman movies. The detective Batman, and then like all the riddles he solves were so stupid. Like. They're like, there's the opening riddle is like, okay, he has this puzzle and Alfred's trying to solve it. And he's just like, 
we'll just erase all the symbols that are in this one p cipher. And he's like, okay, what'll that do? And it spells the word drive. And he just jumps on this random, like, oh, it must be a car in the mayor's basement. And then he finds a random car out of the 13 he has. He goes, okay, there's probably a thumb drive in the USB. It's absurd. No one in the world's ever solved a puzzle that way. It makes no sense. On top of that, there's a murder case and they haven't searched the mayor's basement yet, his own, like, garage yet. It's entirely nonsense. And it's like Batman just solving these riddles, like, that make no sense incredibly fast. And then the one riddle that everyone in the theater is like, oh, it's about Bruce Wayne. He's completely unaware. He's like, oh, it's the orphanage. He's literally talking about an orphan who's a part of the crime syndicate. It's like, it's clearly about Bruce Wayne. Everyone could tell, except for Batman, the guy who just solved these impossible puzzles that made no sense at all. Like, there was so much, like, it just didn't make any sense. And I just feel like as a whole, the story was like, there was no need to tell the story. It wasn't about Batman being a superhero. It's about Batman being a completely out of touch billionaire who was really bad at being a detective and didn't actually solve and stop anything. And then the revelation at the end of like, the world doesn't need vengeance. They need hope. And then he just like deadpan stares this little girl in the face because she's terrified. Never offers her hope. Never, no reassurance. Like the ending scene is like this girl like, I'm scared. And he's just like, stares at her for 30 seconds and then moves her arm off and leaves. You're like, you totally offered a ton of hope. Like, and I have to think that was the director telling Robert Pattinson to like, hey, don't do anything. Just dead stare at people like you're an idiot and they'll get the idea. It was just like the worst iteration we've seen of Batman yet. And I went in with high hopes. I didn't go in wanting to hate this movie, but I quickly was like, oh, this is going bad. And it just got worse. Wow. There's a lot there. A lot to unpack. Uh, would you like to rebuttal to it? Yes. Um, you, didn't you didn't even start the timer, Cody would ignore. I would have stopped him movie. if he took a breath. All right, let's hear from Brennan <laughs> real quick. Uh, well, let's start at the top and talk about the most important thing. I can't read, so I don't know the source material, and I still enjoyed the movie. Wow. Yeah. High I, praise. I, I feel like movie. Cody got so many points wrong. And <laughs> the whole point of the Us, movie. Other than the Joker one? Other than the Like, <laughs> like how he was talking about that little girl staring at him. Like he grabbed her hand and they held hands. And yeah, he just stared, but he was showing that like, hey, I'm here to protect you. The whole point of this movie um, was a Batman origin story, basically. He's been doing it for two years, but outside of the little cards that say to the Batman, I think Batman is uttered once. And he, like everyone calls him justice or vengeance or whatever. It's a story about him becoming the Batman. There are parts where like um, he messes up, like he does this parachute thing and uh, it catches on something and he falls and he injures himself. It's to show that like he is not this perfect vigilante that like we're used to. He's a normal human being who messes up. Um, with that being said, he is the world's greatest detective. So like... It's not just him randomly figuring out or solving these puzzles. It's him, like, thinking outside the box. And the Riddler um, is actually smarter than Batman in the comics. And that's why he's able to do all this stuff and mess with Bruce Wayne. But the, the problem with the... You said about um, Bruce Wayne being the orphan of a crime family. He didn't know his family was involved in crime. All he's heard about is his dad being this perfect human being. So I, I will admit that I also was like, obviously it's about you, Bruce get it together but if it's like the son of like the orphan of a crime or organization he wouldn't know that because he didn't know his well, father was corrupt yeah no I I, I I i get what you're saying and obviously like after that point we didn't know that bruce was a part of a crime family either but the clue was very clearly about a rich orphan kid and he's like oh the orphanage is like the the, 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 the clue yeah. itself made it very clear that whether he was actually part of crime or not, it was clearly about him because he was one of the elite and every one of the elite in that city were all part of, all, were all criminals. So whether Joker or Riddler, sorry, was wrong in assuming he who he was, it was still painfully obvious it was him. So if he got all these other puzzles, that being the most obvious one to the crowd and he didn't get it, that was where it was like, really dude? And, and, not, and it wasn't even just him, it was also... Okay, cut you off there. Yeah, yeah. Because you had your time. I'm sorry. Um, the, the penguin chasing, yes, 100%. He murdered a bunch of people. <laughs> and it was to show, like, um, you know, all he cares about is getting results. And he's willing to do whatever. And he got a little too murdery with it for him to later be like, no, we don't kill. Just a little murdery. We just maim and ruin lives. Insurance won't cover any of this. <laughs> I'm a billionaire. I don't um, need insurance. He cannot arrest the Penguin because Gotham is so corrupt that if Commissioner Gordon brought in the Penguin, um, they would have his head on a platter. He would literally die. 
like they can't arrest um, big crime bosses like that because there are consequences. Because like the mayor, um, the police chief, I think the DA, like everyone had um, that crime family in their pockets, and they couldn't do anything about it. I forgot where I was going after this, but. Uh, yeah, there, there were a couple things, but they're all nitpicky. Like, it's such a solid story throughout. And, like, for him to, like, look at Drive and go to the garage, maybe the cops should have been there. Sure. He didn't find a random car. He found an item stabbed into the tire and deducted, oh, clearly it's going to be that car because he left a clue right there. Yeah, I mean, there's detectives who were there at the murder scene, like, searching the house and garage is, like, the first thing you do. So, like, that was... Dumb. Like they would have found that by then. The thing is, you're saying like you can arrest the penguin because the penguin is so deep in the city's pockets. I agree with that. But then, ten minutes later, they go to arrest Falcone for the same type of stuff, and it was like the same issue. So being like you couldn't arrest the penguin, they'd get killed. Also, Commissioner Gordon was there. So being like, oh, he couldn't arrest people. Commissioner Gordon was there when he caught the penguin and saw the same crap. So the same reasoning, the, the same like logic they could have used to arrest the penguin was what they used to arrest Falcone. They were able to arrest Falcone because Falcone, spoiler alert, I know we're in the spoiler zone, was the rat. They figured out who the rat was. The rat who was helping out the police force. Yeah. They can't arrest the penguin because they know there's a rat. Well, they find out it's Falcone, and now they know like who's corrupt, who's not. Then they can arrest him. No, but the, the thing is they caught the, the, the chase around the penguin was because they were like, leaving them... After a whole like drug deal, as well as found a dead body in someone's car, and the penguin escaped the scene. Like they had plenty of reason to arrest him, but they can't bring in the penguin because that puts a target on Commissioner Gordon. No, but th that's the same reason they couldn't bring in the Falcone, though. Yeah, until they found out who was corrupt and who wasn't. Like Everyone the whole was corrupt. No, because when they pulled out Falcone, all those cops weren't corrupt. That's what they were saying. Oh, okay, you're some saying, of yeah. us aren't. Like they had a whole fleet of cops. They like separated like who the bad ones were and who weren't by the time they arrested Falcone. Sure. And that's why they were able and they had mountains of evidence versus like, hey, we caught you in the middle of a drug deal and we just created this huge murder scene on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> that, that part is hard to justify. <laughs> but it was cool. <laughs> you gotta have explosions in the movie. Otherwise is it even yeah. a movie? It, it was a pretty cool car. No, <laughs> so I guess in response to the um, the fact that it's a Batman origin story um, I will give him credit. Thank you for not killing Wayne's parents again on camera. We don't need a 20-minute setup to see the same thing we've seen a hundred times. We all know how Batman becomes Batman. That's the thing kind of felt like, and maybe part of the source material, like maybe there's a version of Batman where um, he was trained by Alfred, but that was like a random like throwaway line. Was Alfred's like, that's why I tell you how to defend yourself. And it was like, Alfred was the badass the whole time. And, but it was like not explained. So as far as an origin story goes, they actually skipped a lot of origin stuff. And if you're saying like he just was the detective, uh, or he's like the greatest detective. That was literally his very first detective case was when he showed up to that one and solved everything immediately because when he shows up, the police are like, you can't be here. And they're like, he's involved with the case. So he's here because of the letters that say to the Batman. So it wasn't like he was, I mean, you know, like, it wasn't like that he'd been like detective, being a te detective for a while. It was like that was the first time he was allowed to be on a crime scene and just suddenly happened to be the best detective ever. Way beyond was, reason. Was, I don't imagine, I mean, that was his first time on like a major crime scene like that, but he's been the Batman, or Vengeance, or Justice, for two years. So he's been doing it for so two years. So where do you get the two years number from? Uh, they say it all the time in the movie. I think they've said it three or four times okay. in the movie. Because the thing is, like, to be like, oh, it's his origin, like, he's just starting out, but then also the city already has a bat symbol that Gordon installed. Like, clearly there, there's people who know about him. Like, it's not like he just started out. It's yeah, like but it's, it's, the, it's the exact same way as the, uh, Spider the newest Spider-Man trilogy. He's not the Spider-Man until the end of No Way Home, when he's in New York City, living in a shabby apartment, and he's sewed his own outfit, because that's who Spider-Man is. Sure. And it's the exact same thing where, yeah, he's been wearing this suit, and he's been fighting crime, and he's been doing stuff for two years, but he's not the Batman that we know about. He's not the Batman from the comics or the cartoons. He's this guy figuring it out still, mm -hmm. and like creating this character. And that's what it, we're two years into him creating it, and by the end of the movie, it's like he started to figure out who the Batman needs to be type of situation. Sure. Okay. Um, and then also, like, I just, there's so many things about the movie that just, like, A, are very convenient. I felt like this was, like, more convenient and, like, absurd than Uncharted that we just reviewed that was, like, meant to be convenient and absurd. Like, the city is, like, first of all, the entire city is under, like, sea level, apparently, and the ending, they start blowing up walls and flooding the city, and the city people start, like, 
<laughs> sending everyone to the events complex that's 30 feet lower in the ground. It made no sense. And it was really like someone's trying to escape. And they're like, no, no, everyone has to go to the event center because the wall's down. And then water starts pouring in and drowning people. And everyone's like, oh, no. It, it was just, there's so many things that were so stupid. Like, I get why people were there initially because of the mayor's giving a speech. But then as people started, like, pouring in because of the, the whatever, like, the city was underwater... It was, like, just the, the city planning was so dumb. Like, there were so many things that were just, like, were so conveniently bad that just, like, had to work out this way to, like, it just, like, none of it made any sense. I just, I just like there's so many things. It was just, like, this, like, none of these characters, the city, the cops, the criminals, no one is believable. Batman also is not believable. No one is a believable person because these aren't real people. There are people who, like, live in these one three-minute scenes of the movie and have zero other life experience and like have no sort of intellect to like i don't know don't go down into a massive hole when there's water rushing in to drown the whole city like it was just so stupid i don't um i know they close off the bridges to the city because bombs were going off yeah and that's why everyone's stuck and i know the emergency center was that place um but I don't have any counterpoints to <laughs> Well, exactly. the bomb started going off. There was someone was trying to, like, leave. Or it was, it was Catwoman was trying to leave. And the cop's like, no, no, everyone has to go to the emergency event center. The city's flooding. And it was and like, like everyone, everyone has to go to there. the emergency event center because bombs are going off in the city. She wasn't allowed to leave because they were afraid that if people went on the bridge, it'd blow up. Because they didn't know how many bombs there were. Well, the bombs had already taken out the wall. The bombs took out the walls first. So they knew the bridges were out and they know the water's coming in. Water well, there are bridges to fast. leave. Like, they could leave, but they shut them down. Because of bombs. Sure, but they sent them to the emergency event center, which just sunk into the ground while water is rushing in. Yes, correct. So that was just, like, dumb. Like, it was a terrible planning. All right, they so we have... windows to stop the water. <laughs> That's true. Windows do stop water. I have seen the rain. <laughs> okay, so now you've heard, you've heard from both people. Uh, I'm going to allow for some closing uh, statements real quick, and then we'll just ask, like, a little fun little question just to get this uh, wrapped up with. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, actually, I'll go, I'll start with Cody. Cody, uh, would you like to just give, like, a quick little, I'll even start the timer, because it <laughs> just keeps not, yeah, or no, statements. just, like, a quick little closing statement. I, I, I did go in looking forward to it, like, I, I get people, I don't know, I get the response a lot, you just look at things I hate for it. Like, I wasn't, like, I was actually looking forward to it, I did not care for Ben Affleck's Batman, I didn't care for the Justice League, DC Universe stuff they're trying to do, so when they talk about Robert Pattinson Batman being a little more, like, crime noir style, I was looking forward to it. I felt like it was, like, a little bit of crime noir and a little bit of superhero, but it wasn't enough of either of them to, like, be a good genre. Like, I would love to see a Batman that's all, like, crime solving. Also, if he's going to be, like, the Dark Knight and the darkest superhero, I don't know. Like, even Captain America killed people in Endgame, so this whole idea of Batman's, like, the dark person, whatever, and he's, like, willing to do what the cops won't do, but he won't kill people who are terrible people and deserve to die. It's just, like... Don't sell him as, like, the Dark Knight. Sell him as another wimp who's, like, still afraid to break the law. It, it just, and I'll, he just, I don't know. Like, I just, I think I'm coming to terms with, like, I'm just not a fan of Batman as a character. That's what it's sounding like. It's it sounding is. like your issue. But literally the whole win. point of the character is not to kill. Yeah. No, that's, that's all of DC, though, and it's so pointless. It's like you're not no. actually, yeah, it is. That's not all of it, DC. Yeah, uh -huh. Isn't Superman the same, too? Uh, Superman ends up killing a bunch of people. Uh, a lot of heroes end up killing a bunch of people. Sure, I guess the thing is, like, he's not the darkest hero who's, like, willing to go where cops won't. Because even cops kill people all the time. And, um, yeah, so I you just... You heard like, it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that news to people? It's happening a lot. I just say, like, I, w I, I did have expectations of the movie. And I was looking forward to enjoying it. And overall, I was just like... Hour three came around, and I was like, so done. So over. I fucking wasted a whole afternoon on it. So, yeah, not worth watching it. I thought, <laughs> you know, from start to finish, it was a great movie. It was dark. It was creepy. It's exactly, there, there were flaws. I wasn't huge on how Bruce Wayne was portrayed. But, like, this is the exact Batman that I wanted. Just, like, a dark, brooding dude who, like, would go out of his way to kick some ass. And he wore eye makeup. They even showed scenes with him wearing it. Because, like, every Batman has to wear eye makeup. And this yeah. is the first one that, like, doesn't shy away from that. Like, this suit's gonna be fighting crime. I'm spending too much time on eye makeup. <laughs> um, <laughs> or not enough. Not enough. It, I was also done at the three hour mark simply because the movie was over. <laughs> no, let's go to the sexy question or the fun question. The fun question. My fun question for you is I had a lot of fun when we did uh, questions on casting people. Um, 
And everybody always likes to talk about the Joker. So, I want to know who you would cast as the Joker in a sequel to Batman. Uh, I'll start off with you. Oh, for being serious? Like, William Dafoe would be really oh, good. Oh, William, uh, Daf William Dafoe as the Joker. Oof. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. I see it. Like an older, older, like Arkham City If you're going to go Joker. older, I feel like you just, just like stick to Hamill and just be like, give it back to Mark Hamill. He's done it a hundred times. He's done He's the, got voice. the voice. He's well, done yeah. the voice. But I'm just saying, though, like, Mark Hamill, if you're going to go, like, the age range that Willem Dafoe is, like, Mark Hamill's that same age range, is he not? Yeah, he probably is, but William Dafoe literally looks, looks like, like the, the Joker. Joker. Like, when he smiles, yeah. babies cry. <laughs> 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 and me. True. I'm a bit of a scientist myself, you know. Yeah. <laughs> great guy, great guy. Yeah, Cody. I would I'm gonna have to, you know, lean on a stable and that's Danny DeVito's <laughs> Joker. <laughs> Dennis Rodman. Uh honestly, as a Joker, like I don't there's a lot of actors who could obviously could do it. Um, I don't really know, like, because I mean, when they cast Heath Ledger, people were like against it. So right. I feel like the true, like, best Joker is someone you don't expect at all. So like, right? But you have to cast someone. someone. Like, gun to your head right now. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. He's <laughs> 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 the Boston Joker. <laughs> hey, I'm the freaking crap. It's a crime. Uh, I really don't have a good one. Transformers. I, I will say the the Joker they tease at the end sounded a lot to me like Jake Gyllenhaal, and then I thought about it and went, "That's a weird casting choice." If that's who it is, I don't know who it is. I didn't oh, like it's it. um one of the Eternals. It's the dude that could control people. Okay, so oh. I well, that's actually a good choice. Um, but then I was thinking about Jake Gyllenhaal as, uh, as um Joker, and I was like. That's weird because, like, you don't. I mean, he's got so many roles, it's hard to, like, think of him as Joker. But then I was, like, remembering, like, Donnie Darko, where he started. And I was like, oh, there actually is some range there. I could see a Gyllenhaal Hall Joker going over, like, it would be one of those the casting choice people hate, like Robert Pattinson as Batman. But I think he could do a really good job with it. So, as far as a true character goes, I think Gyllenhaal Hall would be a cool Joker. Interesting. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Uh, tell us if you liked the movie or if you hated it. Tell us if you agreed with Cody or if you movie. agreed with Brennan or if you agreed with me you're just the third party who's here existing <laughs> uh remember folks existentialism that's what's for breakfast <laughs>